everyone! Welcome to my YouTube channel! About a year ago, I put out a video going over my personal stats and how I got into tech, and I got a lot of comments from that video and DMs on Instagram asking me more personal questions about tech, and so I thought, with my newfound wisdom of a second year, what can I share with you guys? Let's get into the things I wish I knew about Georgia Tech and what I learned after my first year. Something about Georgia Tech is that it has an immensely huge campus. There is an east side and a west side of campus. There are many differences between these two sides of campus and it's really up to the individual what side of campus they prefer. I lived on west campus my first year, um, not necessarily by choice, but because I preferred to live in a suite style dorm culturally. <laughs> I like how I say culturally. East Campus is a little bit more busy. That's where the frat houses are located. It's the more older part of campus. So you have Tech Tower on East Campus. You have the two dining halls, Nav and Britain on East Campus. And classes tend to be more located on East Campus, though that does change based on what your major is because certain classes are located closer to West Campus. West Campus compared to East is a lot more quiet. So you don't have parties going on on Friday. You don't have the crazy amount of uh, people just constantly walking. You also have the CRC, which is the Campus Recreation Center, or the basically the school gym. You can get pretty much anywhere around campus using the buses, which are semi-reliable. East is known as the busier, more historic, more popular side of campus, whereas West Campus is more quiet, a little more spread out, and a little more further from classes and just the whole busyness, the loudness, and the city. That being said, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be an introvert to live on West and all the extroverts have to live on East. That's not how it works. Well, that's kind of how it works. So many people ask this question, just because you live on West Campus doesn't mean you're not gonna make friends. You are gonna make friends, I made friends, everyone makes friends. College is a really great way to meet new people where it's in clubs, in classes, even in your dormitory. So don't think that just because you live on West Campus, it's gonna be just completely you alone by yourself. Georgia Tech has a free bus system. You or any friends and family, even if you don't go to Tech, can use the buses around campus pretty much the entire year. Now, something about the buses is they can be a bit unreliable. Usually I've been able to get to where I need to be on time, but there have been times where I've been waiting and waiting at a bus station and the bus has been just dwelling one station over. But for the most part, the buses don't usually dwell for more than 15 minutes. If you don't know what a bus dwelling is, it's basically when it stays at one spot for like 10 to 15 minutes. I'm not exactly sure why buses do this. There are basically four main routes that I think everybody uses. The two big ones for people who live on West are the blue route and the red route. Those get you to the other side of campus in a pretty straightforward way and stop at the more like major stops. The gold route or the tech trolley is what gets you down to tech square and the bookstore and just like more into the Atlanta like downtown area. And the Midnight Rambler runs throughout the night, so if you're out partying or you're out late with your friends, you can get back to your dorm safely without having to walk. I've never used the grocery shuttle before, but I've heard that it's very convenient and it only runs on the weekends. There is also something called the Stingerette, which are like a personal Uber around campus, and you can call those on an app and they will come take you from your location to your destination um, for free, but you do need to be a tech student and show your bus card to be able to use the Stingerettes. Like I mentioned earlier, there are two dining halls located on East Campus and one on West Campus. So the two on East Campus are North Avenue and Britain Dining Hall. North Ave, or NAV is what I call it, is located under the NAV apartment buildings, which is where I'm living next year. Britain is a little more historic, cool looking, kind of reminds me of like Harry Potter's dining halls. Both of those have relatively good food. Uh, Britain tends to have more fried food. My personal preference is I absolutely hated village food. I hated it. Oh my gosh, there was like no diversity in the food. They would always have something that just was not good and they would stick to that was not good food. It was just uh, a total chaos. I got like food poisoning twice last year. That being said, I know plenty of people who were completely fine with the food and it really just depends on what kind of food you're used to, what kind of dietary restrictions you have. Nav and Britain are a lot more friendly to vegan and vegetarian individuals. Um, Village uh, tries. They're trying their best. Honestly, I don't want to bash on Village too much. Overall, it's a really cool looking dining hall. The first floor um, is a quiet little um, study area with a cafe. Second floor is where all the food is. And the third floor has a coffee 
a place with baristas that can make you your own coffee so it's not like coffee machines i would get a coffee from there every single morning and sometimes even in the afternoons the coffee was really good um but i was sometimes scared of asking the people because it's not like a machine where you can just like go and press a button it's like oh it's this girl again she wants her freaking caramel macchiato with freaking almond milk if the food really really matters to you i would say maybe east campus might be a little more tempting just because there are two dining halls both within walking distance and there's variety between those two dining halls while we're on the topic of food i wanted to mention that there are food trucks around campus pretty much from like 11 to like 5. there's a chick-fil-a truck which is the most popular because the line spans all across tech green but there's also several other food trucks some of my favorites that i recommend you try out are bento bus and amai most of them park outside the cult which is the student library center and you can just come out after classes or after studying and just grab something real quick food trucks were probably where i had lunch most of the year Tech Square is one of my favorite places to get meals. Tech Square itself is like a little bit of a area that you, if you come out of tech, it's like still technically on tech campus and that's where the bookstore is located, it's a giant Barnes and Nobles. But if you continue down a little bit and turn left, you can find some other really great options. There's a sweet hut within walking distance and if you don't feel like walking, the tech trolley or the gold group bus does take you pretty close to all of these things. Let's get into dining plans and dining dollars versus bus fund. You are required as a freshman to have a dining plan if you are living on campus. Um, so I did have to have a dining plan and I will not be having one this second year. However, there is convenience in having a dining plan because you can simply tap your bus card and the food is right there. It doesn't take that long. You don't need to do your own cooking. It's not as expensive as eating out or doing the food trucks every day. I do know several people who are getting dining plans again this year, so it does work for some people and it doesn't for others. So there are these things called dining dollars and bus funds. So the way dining dollars work, most cafes around campus and some in Tech Square accept dining dollars and bus funds when you want to pay for meals and you just tap your bus card and they that's how it pays. It just goes down on your account. And it's a little more convenient because first, you don't have to carry cash or a credit card with you all the time. And second, um, they actually don't charge you tax when you pay with your dining dollars, so it is a little bit cheaper, you get to save some money. Uh, don't quote me on this, but I believe dining dollars can only be used for food, whereas bus funds can be used to purchase other things around campus as well. Let's get into the CRC or the Campus Recreation Center. Like I mentioned earlier, the CRC is located on West Campus. You can actually go into the CRC just using your bus card. You tap it real quick and this little gate opens up and you walk in and you can use pretty much every amenity in the gym. The gym fee is covered when you pay your tuition at the beginning of the year. The CRC is just overall really awesome. It feels like a real gym. I will say you're not allowed to take bags into the main area and you can either purchase lockers or use the general locker area, which is completely fine. I always use that area and never had my stuff stolen. Let's get into um, how registration works. There is this thing called Degree Works, um, and it, it is from your Georgia Tech Oscar account. So if you go on Oscar, um, you'll be able to find pretty much like everything you need, including Degree Works, which says based on what degree you're trying to get, these are the set of classes you need to complete to get that degree. It has some general information of like, what you've completed, what is being completed, and what you still need to do. If you click on the requirements, you can find a set of courses that will actually give you the credit for what you need so that you can complete that requirement. Registration is done through Oscar, and for your very first registration, you can sit down with someone who's already done it a couple times, and they will help you with it if you go into in-person orientation. I'm not sure how it works online because I went into the in-person facet orientation. You basically select your courses and then you register for it. And as long as there is not an overlap with times or class restriction or major restriction, you should be able to register for the course. A really great way to plan your courses is something called GT Scheduler, where you can basically select the term and then select the classes and it will outline your schedule in a way that like you can physically see it. I remember the biggest like stress I had going into tech was registering for the right classes, 
but don't worry, people will help you out. It's really easy and, and you will be able to get the classes you need eventually, even if you don't get it on your first try. But the more credit hours you have, the more priority you will have in registration. So you can register for classes a lot more quickly and get the classes you need before they fill up. Just so you know, there are certain classes that pretty much everyone has to take regardless of their major. There's the humanities credits, which can be completed by taking a language. Most people at Tech are required to take at least one CS or computer science class, as well as other classes like your health electives and things like that. So just keep that in mind when planning your courses. The bookstore is located in Tech Square. It's just this giant Barnes and Nobles. The first floor is a regular Barnes and Nobles where you can also buy a bunch of Georgia Tech merch. This is where I bought this hoodie. There's escalators that take you upstairs into the specific area where you can get textbooks for your classes. Now I recommend renting out textbooks because they can be a little bit pricey. There are definitely options for online textbooks which are cheaper if you want to be able to keep them and write on them and all of that. I think pretty much everyone has to take one lab during their time. You will need proper lab attire going into a lab, so that means lab coat, goggles, and they do provide you with um, disposable gloves in lab. You can buy your lab coat um, from the same Barnes and Nobles, the same area that you get your textbooks from, and I think it's $40, or you can order it online from Amazon for I'm sure much cheaper. So let's talk about the library. I refer to the library as the Colk or Crossland, even though the library is really three buildings interconnected. We have the Colk connected to the Price Gilbert actual library, and that's connected to something known as Crossland Tower. These three buildings have cafes in them, they have books in them, they have study areas, as well as classes. That is pretty much where I would go every day. Even if I didn't have a class in Colk, I would still make my way to Colk and study there, meet with friends, do group studies. There's rooms you can rent out for free. Probably the best place on campus to get some studying done. Across the towers, sixth and seventh floors are quiet floors, meaning everyone on there is quiet. The seventh floor is a lot more intense, whereas the sixth floor is like you can eat a little snack just as long as you're not like having full-blown conversation. The lower floors are not quiet floors, though Crossland is overall a lot more quiet than Price Gilbert and the Colk. Price Gilbert's third floor also has a really awesome study area. Sometimes people go there to study in groups. Okay, so with everything said about just basically what tech has, let's go over tech's general culture and what this college feels like. When you're on tech's campus, you feel like you're at college. It's a very safe area, you're surrounded by classes, the buildings all look relatively similar and you genuinely feel like you're in a little mini city surrounded by Atlanta's big building. The location of Georgia Tech is really great. It's really safe, I've never felt super in danger when I was there. Um, there's police patrolling pretty much every street, day or night. Although I have received emails about off-campus shooting because that is Atlanta and that stuff does happen. Now, something I've heard a lot from people going to Tech is, it's hard, it's difficult, I'm not going to be able to do it. And I know this because I also felt this exact same way before I started going to Tech. It is definitely challenging, it's not like you can just pass your classes without trying. but. There are so many opportunities for you to get an A in the class. The way Georgia Tech works is if you get an A in the class, that is what goes on your transcript. Whether you got a 90 or 105, they're really working in your favor and knowing that people are busy and they're not gonna be able to study all the time and get perfect scores on every test. And overall, I think even though the classes can be challenging and confusing, everyone who's accepted into Tech is capable of it. There's so many, so many events on campus, pretty much one every other week. Some of my favorites were the GT Solstice K-pop dance group events because they are just amazing, amazing dancers, as well as the SCPC events. So the SCPC is a student organization which plans a lot of really, really fun events, some of which are free and some of which are available at discounted prices. Some of my favorite events were the Six Flags Night, the Aquarium Night, and Sting Break, as well as the Art Festival. All of these were either available on on tech campus or transportation was made available for students, I definitely recommend going to these events, getting to know people and the campus, and just having some fun. College is such a fun time, like meet your people, you know, go out with people, stay up late, you know, do those fun things, explore the city, explore campus. All right, you guys, that's pretty much all I had for you. I really hope that you found this video helpful. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me again. Good luck on your oncoming year at tech. Bye, guys.